The basic understanding of the human heart has changed little in over 300 years. Now, new insights into the structure and function of the heart will change forever the way we view it. The current understanding of the heart and its very crucial role and function has evolved over many, many centuries. The reason that we have focused so much on it is the fact that failure of this pump creates major problems in health to patients and in, in the whole health care problem and the finances and the unfortunate mortality of, of heart failure. In the third century BC, Greek physician Erasistratus described the heart as a pump that actively sucks blood in during the filling phase, known as diastole, and then contracts and forces blood out to the tissues during the ejection phase, known as systole. This active sucking pumping function of the heart was further described by Galen of Pergamon, the famous Roman physician for the gladiators. Through his observations of open chest wounds of gladiators, as well as from dissections of live animals, Galen provided vivid accounts of an active sucking diastole. Though Erasistratus and Galen had very rudimentary understandings of how the heart, vessels, and lungs work together, their concept of a heart that both pumps and sucks prevailed until the 17th century when English physician William Harvey discovered the circulatory system. When Harvey came along in 1628, he, for the first time, really led people to understand very clearly that this was a pump introduced in a circuit that was one continuous uh, circulatory system, and therefore the lung played a crucial role in oxygenating, but it was all part of one circuit. His prestige as the father of the circulation, unfortunately, transcended into his description of the heart, which was rather incomplete. And he thought this was a homogeneous muscle that, that uh, contracted and pumped and relaxed and just passively uh, was filled. And that concept uh, remained for many years. In fact, Harvey's concept of the heart prevails to this day. That is, a muscle with four chambers that contracts to eject blood and then relaxes to be passively filled by the atria. However, not everyone believed this to be true. Early in my career, I realized that uh, something was wrong in the uh, classical conception of the, of the function of the heart. Uh, I, I realized that, uh, that besides the systolic action, ejection of blood, there should exist a diastolic action of the heart to shock blood. In the early 1950s, as a fourth-year medical student at Salamanca University in Spain, Francisco Torrent Guas began an anatomical study of the heart to prove scientifically that his theory and the early observations of Erasistratus, Galen, and others were indeed correct. I started making the sections of any animals I uh, uh, put a right to my hands from uh, uh, sharks, from the fishes, from uh, snakes, uh, and, uh, and uh, frogs, uh, lizards, uh, and pigs, uh, sheep, uh, cows, any kind of, of hearts, and of course human hearts also in the Department of Anatomy. And uh, I started making dissections, and I was during 25 years making dissections, and I, I remember that all these uh, anatomical facts I, I saw, uh, they were like a puzzle. In 1864, Pettigrew, a well-known British professor of anatomy, described the spatial organization of the heart fibers as, quote, an arrangement so unusual and perplexing that it has long been considered as forming a kind of Gordian knot in anatomy. Of the complexity of the arrangement, I need not speak further than to say that Vesalius, Albinus, Haller, and de Blainville all confess their inability to unravel it, unquote. After 25 years of dissections, Francisco Torrent Guasp finally unraveled the Gordian knot. Yeah, from my dissections, uh, I arrived to the conclusion 
that the uh, ventricular myocardium was represented by a muscular band that, uh, that uh, was running from the root of the pulmonary artery to the root of the aorta, uh, describing a helicoid in this space. And uh, you see that uh, in this helicoid uh, is, is delimited a right ventricular cavity and the left ventricular cavity. And that, that is really uh, my contribution to the, to the knowledge of the um, macroscopic structure of the heart. What you are about to see is the dissection of the myocardial ventricular band performed by Francisco Torrent Guasp. Here, a cow heart will be dissected. All mammals and birds were found to have a similar heart structure. The heart is first boiled in water to soften the connective tissue. The atria, aorta, pulmonary and coronary arteries, as well as some fat, are then removed. The first anatomical fact to observe in the dissection of the myocardial band is represented by the anterior interventricular sulcus. This sulcus is crossed by aberrant fibers coming from the anterior aspect of the left ventricle to the free wall of the right ventricle, which, in effect, hold both ventricles together. Using only his fingers to bluntly dissect the heart, just following the natural directions of the fiber, Torrent Guasp begins by cutting through the aberrant fibers along the sulcus and separating the pulmonary artery from the aorta. In this manner, the free wall of the right ventricle can be opened, revealing the right ventricular cavity. A second anatomical fact to observe is represented by the posterior limit of the right ventricular cavity, where the free wall and septum meet. Here begins a cleavage plane that must be followed all the way to the root of the aorta. At this point, you can see, once again following the direction of the fibers, how they descend into the well of the left ventricle. Next, torrent guasp cuts the left fibrous trigon and follows the descending fibers, separating them from the more superficial ones. Turning the heart around and looking at the septum, a third anatomical fact can now be observed. Here you can see two layers of fibers. One runs up almost vertically to the aorta, while these fibers cross almost horizontally. A cleavage plane is in this way defined between the two layers. Torrent Guasp continues the dissection, following the cleavage plane, separating the two layers. Then, by cutting the right trigon, he is able to free the aorta and unravel the myocardial band. The ventricular myocardial band, running from the root of the pulmonary artery to the root of the aorta. A singular muscular band that twists and loops like a rope into a helical structure, forming the left and right cavities of the ventricles. You know, I learned about the ventricular band when I visited Barcelona about a year and a half ago, and I went over to talk to some colleagues about a new operation we we're doing for heart failure, and they suggested that there was something in Barcelona that had dissected the heart out and had some ideas about cardiac anatomy, and I had never heard of uh, Dr. Francisco Torrent Guasp, and he and I met, and the first thing he told me is that my concept of how the heart was formed was not accurate. Then he told me that the heart's way it's, the way it has its conduction that I understood is probably not accurate. In fact, the heart's a rope, and I think that I heard something like that, and I said, that's really amazing. I, I can't believe it. But uh, he then showed us exactly how the heart was formed and, and had reduced it in its simplest possible category, and I said, that's truly amazing, because he had dissected segments of the heart, and he showed us that his concept of a rope was, was very appropriate. The ventricular band, as described by Torrent Guasp, is divided into two loops by a fold at its center the basal or outer loop, and the apical loop, which forms the apex of the heart. The right segment of the basal loop, which runs from the pulmonary artery to the posterior interventricular sulcus, constitutes the free wall of the right ventricle. The left segment of the basal loop, which ends near the aorta, 
belongs to the left free wall. At this point, the band folds down into the well of the left ventricle. This marks the beginning of the apical loop, which consists of a descendant segment and an ascendant segment, separated by the anterior papillary muscle. The septum of the heart is formed by the crossing of the descendant and ascendant segments, which we observed in the dissection. The two apical segments loop in a helical fashion, forming the apex of the heart, which reveals itself to belong to the left ventricle. When I looked at the heart the first time, I saw a circumferential basal loop, and then I saw a descending limb and an ascending limb, and they curled around each other, had a helix, and had a vortex at the tip of the ventricle. And the angles at which they go was about 60 degrees, 60 degrees going down and 60 degrees going up, and they cross each other in that way. And for years, people had wondered why that happened in the septum, why the heart looked that way. And I realized this was really a, a spiral, and I began to think about spirals, and I began to understand that uh, the spirals are almost the, uh, the master plan of nature in terms of structure and in terms of rhythm. And if you begin to look at spirals, if you look at a spiral simply and pick the middle of the spiral up, you'd form a helix. And of course, the heart is a helix. Using a unique imaging technique to examine the architecture of the heart, a cow heart is first inflated with compressed air. Then, in a series of X-ray images looking down on the heart, the helical structure of the muscular band is clearly revealed as we move down into the apex of the left ventricle. Once again, notice how the loops of the band turn in opposition. Two reciprocal spirals merging at the apex, 